The following program is classified G. It's suitable for all ages. We would like to remind our viewers that the views expressed in this program by our participating guests are solely viewpoints of them who take part and does not reflect the views and beliefs of the Verena Media Network. This is an opinion-based program. Tonight on this special presentation of Get Real, can we reset our country? With COVID doing its most significant damage to a country like Sri Lanka, the people of this nation is yet to understand the real damage done by erroneous action taken in the guise of saving lives. Lockdowns don't work because lockdowns are basically inhibiting well people and well people don't transmit the virus. Shutdowns, lockdowns and restrictions have hampered the growth of this nation, eventually putting every Sri Lankan's life in the future at risk. We must be ready for the next phase. We can't wait till everything is resolved to start thinking of what are we going to do. Unfortunately, instead of looking at accurate data and real science to address a health pandemic, some Sri Lankan health officials have opted to go with the flow. At the same time, authorities measure public opinion by simply looking at Facebook, which is rampant with special interest groups like the useless opposition's clown clan. Time has now come to look towards the future and look at saving whatever is left and understanding that it's D-Day for this nation in terms of its growth and prosperity which eventually, if we get it right, will let every Sri Lankan benefit failed for everyone to suffer. Everybody had to get together and we had to build our nation brand. That is the challenge for the Central Bank. Can we reset Sri Lanka? From the beginning we never had enough but we managed to bring the infrastructure and the facilities updated according to the situation. Can we reset the minds of our people? And can we change the course of this nation? It is a battle that has to be won, not by some, but by all. For expert opinions, tonight I have the pleasure of being amid some key movers and shakers in the Sri Lankan economy. Group CEO of Hemas Holdings, Kasturi Wilson. Chairman and Director of Sri Lanka Telecom, Rohan Fernando. Group Managing Director and CEO of Dreamron Group, Dr. Kishu Gomez. And Chairman of Access Group of Companies, Sumal Pereira. Real views, real opinions and honest conversations. This is Get Real and it all starts right now. This is a special presentation of Get Real, the great Sri Lankan reset. Regenerate the economy, revive the nation and regain our way of life. Now, reporting from Studio 24, here's Mahish Jani. Good evening once again. This is a special presentation of Get Real, the Great Sri Lankan Reset. Tonight, I want to engage in a con conversation where we want to understand where this country is heading economically and also as a nation. I also want to understand how much can we change to ensure that all of us survive this pandemic. Now, if you are a regular of this show, you very well know that I am against lockdown, shutdowns and restrictions of this kind uh, in this country as a measure for this crisis. Why? Well, it's pretty simple. What we right now have is a health pandemic. Nowhere in the history of the world has any civilization managed to get rid of a health crisis as simply staying at home. Sri Lankans have been delusional with this fantasy of a zero COVID day. So our focus pretty much has been based on that. However, what the real focus needs to be is not getting rid of COVID per se, which we should leave it to the scientists. 
Our focus should be on how to take the country, our lives, our livelihoods forward by looking at ways of living with COVID and mitigating the impacts of the virus on human lives. I know all of you would say, hey Mahesh, what nonsense are you talking? See, the lockdown took place, the numbers are dipping, it's coming down, it's working. But what most of us don't realize is that for the lockdown to be successful fully, we should bring the infection rate to zero, which we all know will never happen. So in return, all that what we've done so far through the lockdown, we have locked down our nation, ruined our economy, let our SMEs and low income earners suffer, hijack our healthcare system and pretty much destroy the vast amount of progress you and I have made since the end of the war by not being able to eradicate COVID. However, tonight I want to focus on solutions. How can we change the dynamics and take the country forward for that? Well, for that, uh, I have uh, invited key leaders, movers and shakers in the business world who are pretty much the decision makers of our economy, with whom uh, I will uh, have a discussion very shortly. But before that, to start us off uh, with some facts and figures uh, of where we are as a nation, Dani Duvithanavasam reports on tonight's real story. The calls for lockdown began as far back in March of 2020, when Imperial College London had released a study headed by Professor Neil Ferguson, proposing that, quote, more intensive and socially disruptive interventions will therefore be required to suppress transmission to low levels. It is likely such measures, most notably large-scale social distancing, will need to be in place for many months, perhaps until a vaccine becomes available, a position that he no longer holds. The harmful impacts of this form of academia has trickled down to countries such as Sri Lanka, which doesn't have an economic strength as most of the Western counterparts. This is quite evident when looking at a recent study by the World Bank on the effects of the pandemic on the Sri Lankan economy. Research declined to an 11-year low in February 2021 before a currency swap of 1.5 billion US dollars. Due to a shortage of foreign currency, the exchange rate depreciated by 6.5% from January through March 17, 2021, primarily given the excessive lockdown procedures put in place. Uh, when you look at the larger society, the, the economy, 60 to 60 to 70% of the economies in the formal sector. And what you see is a patchwork of livelihoods um, among people. And this patchwork consists of uh, casual labor, self-employment, and I'm talking about people like trishaw drivers. Then you have people who live on debt, right? And then the others, you um, either migrate to the Middle East. I mean, they live off of migration, the remittances. So all of these areas have been hard hit. And going forward, I think the economic policies that we design for this country should be to first support this segment of the population to um, recover and revive. Well, I think one of the mistakes was to indeed uh, present that trade-off of lives yeah. versus the economy. That is a false trade-off. Over 500,000 people are expected to have fallen into poverty as a result of the crisis in Sri Lanka. In the outset, the government has taken a number of measures in order to control the current economic situation, not allowing the dollar to fluctuate further and increase foreign reserves. The central bank has determined that the real GDP growth for the year 2021 would be 6% based on the central bank report of 2020. If these projections can be met, it will actually mean a very good position for the country's future. The most recent step to curtail merchandise imports was when the central bank of Sri Lanka introduced a margin deposit requirement against the importation of selected non-essential, non-urgent goods. The policy is expected to support the ongoing efforts to preserve the stability of the exchange rate and foreign currency market liquidity, particularly by discouraging excessive imports of speculative nature. The 100% cash deposit margin was emplaced on the goods that were imported excessively over the first seven months of 2021. The policy discourages the importation of certain goods that were speculative, overpurchased, and others deemed non-essential. The reduced pressure on the foreign currency market will increase the stability of the exchange rate set by the central bank. In 2020, Sri Lanka initiated a range of import controls, including a total ban on automobile imports in order to stem foreign currency outflows. The import substitution industrialization policies were similar to what was done in Britain, the US, and Korea. But I must uh, point out that the two countries have uh, uh, diverged uh, quite a lot in terms of economic development. Now, let's uh, go back uh, to 1961. In that year, Sri Lanka had a per capita income of $143. South Korea had uh, 94. Six decades later, however, in 2020, Sri Lanka's uh, the per capita income was 
$3,682, whereas uh, that of South Korea's was uh, $31,489. The best way to make you feel how the great this uh, transformation was is uh, to talk about the Korean car company, Hyundai. Of course, uh, this uh, transformation was not achieved by the company alone. It was a national effort. The Korean government, through its uh, famous trade and industrial policies, protected and promoted uh, the auto industry. So the import of all foreign cars was banned uh, until 1988. And of course, uh, in return for the support, the company had to deliver results. Eh? When that, uh, you use these uh, protectionist policies, what often goes wrong is that uh, the uh, protection and subsidies are unconditional. But uh, in this case, the government made it sure that Hyundai and other companies that were getting this uh, the government support through protection subsidies and other measures had to perform. The clear critique that arises during all these scenarios is whether Sri Lanka is dwelling too much into protectionism. When you look at the average tariff rates for agricultural and non-agricultural goods in Sri Lanka and a range of other South Asian, Southeast Asian and East Asian uh, economies, when you compare these figures and you can see that um, countries like Korea have very high duty rates, right? Over double that of Sri Lanka. We think India is liberal and we think Thailand is liberal, but their agricultural duties are much higher than Sri Lanka. The one that comes close to Sri Lanka is perhaps Malaysia, Pakistan and Bangladesh, from whom we import a lot of food items uh, well, from Pakistan, right? Uh, that two of the countries in the Southeast Asian region with the highest average duty on non-agricultural products. Then India, fast developing emerging economy, Vietnam, Thailand, right? They are generally presented to us as these examples of liberalization. But when you look at the numbers, their tariff and duty rates, they have higher rates of average duties than Sri Lanka. Meanwhile, the government of Sri Lanka passed the Tax Amnesty Bill and the Securities and Exchange Commission of Sri Lanka Bill. The bill is expected to open any sums of money hidden, boost investments and eventually increase tax collections from the earnings of the assets and better compliance. Another unique project that is targeting the economic revival of Sri Lanka is the Port City Initiative. The Colombo Port City, which has caught the global headlines for quite some time, has been a key area of focus for the current government in looking at its economic revival. The Colombo Port City project is the single largest foreign direct investment project to date in Sri Lanka valued at 1.4 billion US dollars. In February 2020, PwC Sri Lanka evaluated the economic impact of the port city to Sri Lankan economy, concluding that between 135,000 to 200,000 jobs will be created. This will also be complemented with 9.7 billion US dollars in foreign direct investments within the development stages of the project. Uh, I must say uh, we have already secured investment for a few parcels of land um, and also we are encouraged to see uh, robust interest from uh, globally reputed large-scale investors. Um, uh, I think they are attracted by the scale that Port City offers and the opportunities that Port City offers. During the operational stages, it is estimated that an annual contribution of 11.8 billion US dollars to the GDP of the country will be made. The success of the Port City will certainly be an important push for the country's economy and the growing need for foreign reserves. As business leaders have overwhelmingly suggested, Sri Lanka's economic story is far from over. It's actually just beginning to become a regional hub for commerce. This is Dani Dutanamasam reporting for The Real Story. Well, that is Dani Dutanamasam with The Real Story there. I want to get some uh, you know, con uh, context into the conversation we are having tonight with regard to the great Sri Lankan reset. Now, what does that mean? Does that mean we have to reset everybody's minds, put everybody into the sea and wash them back and, you know, wash them and take them back into the country? Nothing of that sort. I think we need to start with the mentality. In order to get some expert opinions, I've invited, uh, you know, the movers and shakers in our economy at the moment uh, right now. Uh, Dr. Kishu Gomez, uh, the group managing director of uh, and the CEO of Dream Around Group of co uh, Companies. He's also very well known uh, with regard to, you know, the tourism industry, He'd done a, a, a lot of work on that. Uh, also joining us uh, tonight is um, Mrs. Kasturi Wilson, she is the Group CEO, Hamas Holdings, uh, VLC. Good to see you once again. Welcome back uh, to the show. Uh, also joining uh, me tonight is uh, Mr. Samar Pereira, the Chairman of Access Group of Companies. Good to see you, sir. Welcome to the program. And also Mr. Rohan Ferrando, uh, Chairman of uh, Sri Lanka Telecom, Chairman and uh, the Managing Director of Sri Lanka Telecom. Good to see you, sir. Thank you very much for being here. So 
the, the question we have, we are trying to get an understanding is to pick your brain because uh, we did a little bit of uh, uh, research uh, in terms of, you know, the companies that y'all are working and how much y'all are impacting in terms of, you know, people's lives, which is, which is the final say. We, we are trying to make the lives of Sri Lankans better by anything we engage, whether economically, politically or what, what not. So we've, uh, you know, total number of employees, all your companies are, are, have uh, managed to uh, give employment is around 20, uh, closer to 25,000. If we actually multiply that by five because of the families that they impact, it clump comes closer to more than 100, uh, you know, 120,000 uh, people. Uh, you are taking decisions based on, on, on those people that will impact their lives and, and, and their, uh, you know, livelihoods uh, beyond that. I, I want to start off uh, with uh, Mr. Rohan Fernando. Uh, what do you think, sir? Are, are we screwed? in this country economically what, what what's your take we are not screwed or we are not bankrupt i think the a lot of people who are talking i think they have some bankrupt minds because if you take sri lanka we are a small economy if our gdp is about 88 billion dollars we survey the global economy of 87 trillion dollars and the the last year the global economy got shrunk by about four percent and now they are predicting it to grow by about 4.9% in 2021. That is, those are the predictions. Where we are concerned, I think we, are, we have got carried away with this pandemic. We have had pandemics before. We have had these viruses, flus. I mean, you are talking about, forget the Spanish flu. In our lifetime, we have seen the polio yeah. pandemic. We have had various other things like hepatitis, then uh, Japanese encephalitis. Even because it was concentrated to our part, the West didn't take it seriously. But this time, the West got affected. As a result, the whole world has got affected. They say when the Western countries get a cold, we get pneumonia. <laughs> so that is the, the way we behave. So I, where I am concerned, I feel we can manage it. Now, if you take our company, we have 10,000 people, that is 10,000 families, and we manage it well because we have uh, established this business continuation plan. When we looked at the BCP, at the initial stage, there was nothing of pandemic. We didn't have pandemic, we didn't have cyber attacks, nothing. So we gradually built the BCPs to include pandemics and cyber attacks. Because as you know, telecom cannot stop. You can't yeah. lock down telecom. If telecom is locked down, all systems will get locked down. The defense, health, everything, we provide the, the backbone of communication. So how do we move? We have moved very well. As of today, we have managed it very well. Our people are working. They are not only on the street, they are on top of poles. They dive into the ocean to ensure our CMV cables are intact. They uh, creep through tunnels to keep the systems going. And as of today, we have never had fatalities. Today, we have only 111 people under tested and only 12 people in our company-owned yeah. quarantine centers and others are home quarantine. That is not only the staff, they are families. We look after the family also. We extend our health support system to the family. So we allocated the substantial amount, something like uh, 100 million we have allocated for COVID prevention system, which we have not spent totally, we are managing. So I believe most institutions in the private sector, the public sector, if they adopt something like that, where you analyze the problem and how you can contain and control, we don't need to have lockdown. This is my personal belief and this is what we are practicing found success in it. This is, that thinking is pretty much, you know, all throughout in the hierarchy of this country. That's what they're thinking. We need to get back into work and not let COVID be the, 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 the deterrent where we stop everything and, and go back into, uh, you know, our homes. Uh, um, uh, Mrs. Wilson, I, I want to get your take on this. Do you think, like, you know, that I, I'll, we'll get into that, uh, you know, discussion later on with regard to what the policies and, and what the government is doing but what do you think right now do you think you know Sri Lanka can get out of this or, or what is your mindset and what are you telling your employees at the moment um, so to lay a context uh, <coughs> as Emma's um, 
we are in local manufacturing and do more domestic, we have some international presence. And um, from domestic manufacturing, which gives employment for, to quite a bit of uh, people in Sri Lanka, not only him, as all domestic manufacturers, they understand what this crisis is. And it's not something which happened overnight. overnight. I'll tell you this historically has been going on for over 20, 25 years or more than that. It's stemming from the way our economy is. We are an import dependent economy. Mm. And by that, we are always having a deficit. Uh, and uh, how, do you, how do you manage it? Um, domestically, we are reliant on uh, our f fiscal policies don't even do too much of collection. So we, we kind of manage that way. So currently, thank, with COVID, A, there was an excess expenditure. The revenues they foresaw didn't come through. But uh, most importantly, we had to go through these uh, lockdowns and um, uh, which had impact on terms of domestic production. In the meantime, the hard currency itself, you can see today the problem we have is the access to hard currency. So as domestic manufacturers, we struggled in terms of um, how do you do one ex-imports? Uh, what is, uh, how do you have access to the dollars? And uh, from a country point of view, I think the country's crisis is Today, we've managed to pay our debt, the first one. By next year, you have another five billion mm. to pay. How do you access it? Um, how do you do that while keeping the economy going? Um, so at, at some point, I think while, uh, while Rohan is from a service sector, uh, the majority in absence of tourism kicking in now, and we need time, we need time for all the corrections. And I'm telling you that we need to do corrections, all of us, private sector, government has to take star hard stands. As a country, we have not we have been shying away from tough reforms. We've been doing these populist kind of mm. things, which are like uh, small repairs. But we do have it. I, uh, for me, from from where I see it, uh, in the absence of um, dollars, I, I use, you saw certain shortages of certain food. That was just an, a short-term thing, purely because people couldn't import. But in the long term, uh, in the medium term, we we will have to answer that. And I I think there will be some social impact. There definitely will be social impact to the, the underprivileged. Uh, from domestic manufacturer's perspective, um, we need to be able to function for that a key part of his hard currency. So I guess we, in my words, I think we have a crisis. We can run away from it. But, but, but can we get out of this? Because this entire mentality about, you know, oh, we are drowning, we are going to, uh, you know, to uh, becoming like Zimbabwe, all, all that is, that is what's happening on the ground level. Uh, I, I want to get uh, Dr. Kishu's uh, uh, intake on, on this as well. Uh, we have a problem in terms of our mindset is so negative uh, from the grassroots level, from people, if, you, if they believe whatever they see on Facebook, that's the level of, uh, uh, you know, if I may use that word, the stupidity we have in, in this nation, instead of understanding that, you know, the logic behind. Uh, doctor, what do you think? You know, can we ever address this? No, we certainly can. Uh, as as uh, Rohan said, uh, our economy has been resilient. I mean, we fought a 30 year old war. And exactly. uh, even during that time, you know, we managed to survive. And uh, in uh, 2008, uh, when I was uh, in the energy sector, crude oil hit uh, 147 mm -hmm. level, yet we kept the economy going. Uh, yes, we can certainly get out of it, and uh, you just look at you know, some of the global news. Uh, after eight years of global history, uh, they're expecting the best year uh, or best recovery in the year 2021. Uh, the global economy is estimated to be, uh, you know, grown at 5.7%, uh, uh, which is phenomenal. Um, so talking about uh, Sri Lankan situation, uh, post quit uh, or in the new normal world, recovery has been tremendous. And we know whenever the lockdown situation was eased off and uh, no lockdown, uh, no limitations, the companies are being able to bounce back. Other than you know, a couple of industries like tourism, for example, yeah. which would take maybe another one and a half years to two years time for it to be able to recover fully. But look at any other industry. Uh, most of the industries have, have been able to you know, uh, come back to uh, pre-COVID level. Uh, not being able to sustain because you know, we've been having constant you know, lockdowns, you know, which, is, uh, which is sad, whether it's the right thing to do or wrong thing to do, well, I mean, we can argue until cows come home. 
but uh, it's due to that. So if we can look at a situation where we get ourselves immune to working in this new normal world, managing uh, the COVID spread, uh, having a good uh, you know health response to it, and change the attitudes of people mm -hmm. uh, and get everyone to you know rally around one vision and one set of strategies, uh, we can you know certainly uh, get out of it. Mr. Pereira, uh, we've been you know uh, earlier on before we uh, came on the show, we've been talking about the fact that you know the lockdowns how it doesn't actually help uh, in terms of you know booming an economy. Uh, what I earlier on said is also the fact that you know if by any chance lockdown is a, a deterrent towards uh, making sure that COVID is you know, eradicated or brought it down, what why do we need to uh, sacrifice the economy uh, to something that we are not getting a hundred percent solution? What do you think? You know how how uh, is this addressing our issues? in terms of you know growing the economy uh, getting the country where it needs to be because i don't think uh, the country has understood the the huge task we has as a nation forget about these political parties or anything uh, what is your take on the that? country is not the corporate or the colombo people or the balance sheets of corporate country is 22 million people we have to when we come here, we have to think of the 22 million people. Sure. You know, for example, if you see the corporates, will you, this year show one of the, some of the best results. Yes, exactly. You know, that doesn't mean the country is okay or not okay. I'm just saying that what has happened is we must we must admit our mistakes. First way of getting over a problem is to admit to our mistake. Since independence. We have lived beyond our means, exactly. you know. So, so it's not one government or two governments. Yeah, because exactly democracy government. and elections have a huge price to pay. We are everybody is trying to outdo the other in promising something better, and that and means not they are way. not spending their personal money; they are spending public money. So. In that situation, that must we that word reset is an important word. We have to reset. And one way which I would like to use this forum to pro propose is the political parties get together on economic fundamentals. You know, if they don't get together, this will never come right. Irrespective whether there's COVID or not. COVID or not. You yeah. know? And, and because uh, everybody is talking of there are things, but we, me, we, me, 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 I, me, myself. <laughs> so, but if we think of the country's economic situation, now this is something which is personal to me. I'm saying we have a big problem because we have the country economy. Mm. We also have the government economy. <laughs> now, country economy, if you ask any old level student, will tell you you must be competitive. So that is devaluation is a good thing. Now, a very highly successful country like China, they are devaluing, they are controlling the currency. They don't allow it to go up. But we, I heard a lot of economic people say, no, no, we must keep the rupee down. Why? Because it serves their purpose. purpose yeah. Their purpose of uh, settling their debts or something. But if you don't devalue, that is the only help we can give the exporter. You, you agree with that, uh, uh, ma'am? So it's coming to the for fact that you can't, during these kind of limitations, you don't have foreign currency, you have limited resources, you need the local economy going, you need people to be in employment. Then you can't control it with saying control your exchange rate, control prices. It's you're telling the, the corporates or the anybody in business, tie your hands and you work. You can't. At one point, it, it, you don't have uh, access. So I agree. I think we have to buy it. And it's not only that. We'll have to take hard calls on reforms, uh, whether it's spending. And as like Sumal said, we have been a com country excessively consuming unnecessary stuff, as whether it's government or whether it's private sector, as, as, as individuals. We'll have to be mindful because it's about the 22 million people. It's not us corporates who can survive. It's about the 22 million because we want to make sure that everybody has employment and survives the next two, uh, two uh, three years. 
um, it's about them understanding it as well. So we 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 have a pro we have an ownership towards that. But for that, everybody should be able to take certain decisions. And I agree, if this platform can get um, uh, the the opposition and and actually a voice where the masses understand. Look, successive elections have come and gone. Each time, it's not the right thing to do for the country is what's not the policy. The policy is taken based on what's the most populous thing to do. And That's by the that, problem. the masses get, they, they don't, they only hear and believe, right? So, I mean, because of this, I had to understand how be a, become an economic student. So you can't expect them to understand it. but. If the, the 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 politicians, not the people in powers only, stand together and do what's right for the com country, I think all corporates should take the bullet, and the public sector employees also have to be mindful and support it. We can't recover long term without taking tough calls. Before we uh, go for a break, uh, I want to get uh, Mr. Rohan's uh, idea on this. Uh, do you are working into, you know, partly it is the government uh, sector, uh, you know, semi-government uh, when it comes to Sri Lanka Telecom. It, it is, Telecom right? is a listed company it's in the Colombo yeah. Stock Exchange. <laughs> no. Government the has a sizable uh, uh, and we are Malaysian investment. So you but are you right. See, yeah. They are so sitting in I the middle. I am not only in uh, telecom, actually I am very much involved in the tea industry, in, having exactly. set up a company. What I feel is as quite rightly said by these, all these people, unfortunately all our governments have a political agenda. They yes. don't have a country agenda. Most of the countries have the country vision. Whichever the government comes, that main country vision, the targets are maintained. Here, every time a government changes, they have a political agenda. Uh, or, you know, uh, comes over Never the country change agenda. Change a government, change a minister, it yeah. will be happen. So, 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 and, and, and the corruption at its highest. Yes. So, the, the fish start rotting from its head. <laughs> so, when the corruption stops, most of these institutions can be converted to profit making. Look at all the government institutions, they are, have a lot of assets, freehold assets. Now, most of the assets are dormant assets. If the assets can be converted to, monetize, if you monetize them, you don't need to depend on the, the, the central treasury for paying yes. your salaries. For, 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 now, if you have 1.5 million government servants, and 85% of our tax money goes to support the government service, and most of them are at home earning their salary, and the government keep on paying. Not the government, we, the people who work, people who contribute to the tax resources, pay that one. So the, the first reset should come from this, you take the education, you are talking about free education. Is the education free? Zero. Every student, whether he goes to a government school or not, has to go for tuition to pass the exam. That is money. I think they spend five to 10,000 rupees a month, most of them, majority of them, for tuition to pass. So where do we say education is free? We have 1,135 schools. 10,135 10, schools, 250,000 government teachers. And I know these figures, we are, we are trying to give connectivity to all the schools through fiber tech, right? So we believe that by resetting these, you can convert an uh, overbearing public sector to work for the country, to get them feel that you are part of this economy. This is with these 22 million people come into play. They represent these 22 million people. So this is where the reset button should be started from. Uh, indeed, uh, d Dr. Public Kishore. sector revamping of the public sector. For that, you need the political will from both sides of the divide. You, you, you also in a because they will promise something this time where they can never deliver, or <laughs> it's not possible. Like the, unless you have the Aladdin slam, then the next set comes and promises something more than that. And the people also, believe this and they demand and they get on the street. Dr. Kishu, it starts with the education hmm. uh, onwards, right? Because we, fr uh, I think all of Sri Lankans, like the 22 million has been taught to, uh, to have this begging mentality. Everything needs to come. Disaster happens, uh, government has to come and serve us. You know, all because from the get-go uh, in our education system, we've been taught that uh, if the white skin does it, that's the best. If we do it, you know, double check it, think about it, that kind of a mentality. Is that 
what do you think we need to start on uh, you know resetting all this in the uh, you know right now even the schools are not functioning <laughs> you know as per se but you know isn't it the place yeah uh, good uh, question but uh, you know to be able to put that in context now all of us are talking about recovering from the pandemic to me it's not about recovering from uh, the pandemic right an economic crisis has been looming over the past you know several years from 1917 to 19, uh, sorry, uh, 2017 to 2019, the average uh, GDP growth was only 3.1%. Uh, 3 uh, and in 2011 and 12, country recorded 8% growth and 9% growth consecutively uh, post-war. Yeah. Uh, and then there were, you know, so many other, you know, economic uh, developments, you know, that took place, governments changing, all of that. And uh, with the public, uh, uh, you know, expenditure going up, having to, you know, get more and more loans and having to service them. And, and now, you know, being a middle income country, uh, getting loans on commercial terms and no donations anymore, no concession rates anymore. Um, and uh, as uh, Kasturi quite rightly said, uh, import dependent economy. And you know, if you look at our, our expenditure, forty-five percent of our imports is for food, right? Consumption. Consumption, right? Uh, so that's that's where the disaster actually, you know, started. Uh, so it's it's not about uh, you know, trying uh, you know reaching um, the pre-pandemic uh, you know yeah, revenue yeah, levels. Yeah. It's about you know going much beyond that. Uh, probably uh, you know talking about another. Uh, 10 billion to you know 20 billion uh, dollar you know kind of incremental revenue that we need in order to you know create uh, a sustainable uh, you know good economy within which the 20 million people can you know deserve uh, rather enjoy the life they deserve so it's about that so your question about education yes we are being educating our people but have we been giving uh, knowledge you know that has uh, commercial value I mean, we have had a you know big question mark there, uh, and as Rohan said, uh, I mean, they go to school. What do they learn? You know, to learn, they need to you know do tuition. So that is what has been going on, you know, for several decades. So they need to obviously uh, the government and policymakers, you know, need to obviously bring in reforms in order to give them uh, knowledge that has commercial value. And we've been also talking about politics, right? Uh, corruption and you know politicians being able to mislead the the voters, and I think there is a need uh, now in the country to to educate uh, every single uh, voter or every single uh, you know individual a little bit about economy, how economics work, right? When there is one government in, in power, the, the opposition basically says, you know, we can do better, and uh, they but, fall but for it. it doesn't hold, uh, you know, water, on, or, or, it's like water And it on has the been, you know, going, you know, over and over again without real, you know, success being achieved. Uh, let's take a short commercial break. Uh, this is a special presentation of Get Real, the great Sri Lankan reset. We are talking about, uh, you know, getting out of COVID and trying to understand how we can do that uh, we want to start off uh, with resetting our minds and our thoughts and uh, look uh, like what mr rohan said um, you know think as a nation not not just as individuals but but eventually look at uh, uh, the whole, whole bigger picture rather than being very you know narrow-minded let's take a short commercial break we'll be right This special presentation of Get Real, the great Sri Lankan reset. We are talking about how to get this country back on track and instead of not have these kinds of nonsense, uh, you know, pertaining to lockdowns and all. Uh, I, I really uh, request you to do your research and try to understand that these kinds of methodology doesn't help us, uh, especially a country like Sri Lanka. We don't have that much of 
you know, money to spend around, uh, keep absorbing these shocks to the economy. What people really need to understand is if there is a bill that will come out from this lockdown saying, you know, 20 billion, 30 billion, who's going to pay that? That is a question that we all as a nation needs to ask because we are going to pay that. Nobody else is going to come up uh, and give us money. And then when the country, you know, you take loans and all those kinds of things, then everybody wants to talk about, you know, taking loans, taking loans, inflation, this and that. There's a lot of things that people really need to, you know, change, reset their mindset and do their own research in order to understand where we are as a nation. I'm in conversation uh, with uh, Dr. Kishu Gomez, uh, the group managing director of Dreameron Group of Companies, uh, Mrs. Kasturi um, Wilson, the Group CEO of Hamas Holdings, uh, Mr. Sumal Pereira, Chairman of Access Group of Companies, and also uh, Mr. Rohan Fernando, Chairman of Sri Lanka Telecom. Uh, and he's also a, 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 a person who has been involved in uh, the tea industry for quite some time uh, in, in Sri Lanka. So a um, lot of experience uh, we have on this table tonight. I want to start off uh, with uh, Mr. Sumal Pereira with regard to you. So, the central bank, let's take these four elements. We have the central bank on one side, we have the government on the other, then we have uh, you know, the corporate sector uh, who is pretty much running the country's economy, and then on the other side, the, the normal people, the 22 million that you were talking about. Um, central bank is taking decisions and suggesting it to the government, saying, you know, we need to do this, we need to adjust, you know, do all those kinds of things. The government comes and promises the people, it's going to be heaven for you. We will deliver heaven. That's what every government says when they come to power, uh, uh, telling Sri Lanka is going to be a paradise island. This is what they say. Now, central bank says, hang on, you can't become a par paradise. You've got to start somewhere. And they implement certain kind of policies. On the end of things, the person puts their hand into their pocket, no money. Okay, they don't feel anything, they scream, shout and all those things. The corporate sector is also functioning in, in a manner. Now, there's a massive gap in all these areas. Don't you see that it's high time that this needs to be addressed, but the central bank needs to be doing things according to what the, uh, the corporate sector is suggesting and want. Eventually, the governments, if they get together, uh, touch wood, that will never happen, but you know, uh, if they do, you know, have one sturdy policy toward, toward the future, knowing the fact that we can actually get to a certain extent, get this country uh, back on track, even if a, a crisis like this comes in the future, that we will be able to absorb it. I don't think there's economic problem, but we definitely have a foreign exchange and a reserve and a Balancing of uh, payments. payments problem. Uh, you, you, know? you mean economic problem in the sense currently there is no economic crisis? Is that no, what you're saying? There is, there is the economic crisis like the rest of the world. Yes. But these are these are things that happen in the world for the next hundred years. There will be ups and downs. We but here here we have a big problem because we don't have money foreign exchange to pay our bills and our imports. So, but that, I think there's a big communication gap between yeah. the country and the policy makers and the people who are, if they must come and tell the people, now if I go to a bank, they don't tell me any reason. They say, Central we can't, bank <laughs> we can't <laughs> open LC, or the, although the dollar is 202, if you pay me 220, I can open your LC. Then I ask, can you give me a letter? Because I have to then charge my client most of the time when it's the government. Government will say, no, 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 no. This is the central bank rate. This is what we will reimburse you at. So, so they're contradicting their contradicting. own. Contradicting. Uh, so see. different. So what I'm saying is resetting must be done at all levels. And first thing to reset, I also say it cannot happen. People must get together for the sake of the country and for the sake of the economy onto one platform on certain policy matters. Because in another five years time, somebody will say, I will give another two measures of rice, you know. So it can't happen that way. We can't uh, live beyond our means. Uh, Mr. Rohan Fernando, uh, uh, what do you think right now? Uh, the policies and the decisions taken by the government, the central bank, to address this, do you think uh, we are, it is helping? 
Uh, actually, it's confusing. That's uh, to begin with. Now, if you look at it, we have been borrowing uh, to pay our borrowings. It is not primarily for development work, where it will generate uh, uh, return on investment. Most of the time, we have been borrowing. Now, today, I think I said yesterday, I, wa I was told that we have four billion in our reserves. There are times we have gone down to 1.2 billion also during the times of the war. We recovered. So these four billion, I don't know for how many months payments, but the biggest problem is our debt repayment. So I feel we should immediately go for a debt moratorium with the lending agency. I'm sure we can do it under these circumstances. A lot of countries are doing that, get a debt moratorium and delay our uh, the, the repayment, uh, the, uh, you know, whatever the installments with our friendly countries, that can be done. I, I'm, I'm sure the government must be thinking on those lines. We have a new governor at the central bank. This is not a crisis that cannot be managed. It can be managed, but you have to look at it uh, consciously and keep all the people informed as to what is happening, especially the industrialists who depend on import for certain exports, whilst controlling the the import of non-essential goods, there are certain amount of industrial components that has to be imported for exports. And that cannot be curtailed, because if you curtail that, what happens is the economy starts slowing down, and you can't uh, get your factories working. So they, they have to look at it separately. But I know even for your telecom industry, we have certain components we have to import. And you have to wait in a queue. As you say, we have to wait in a queue to open LCs which is not uh, productive because uh, by the time you get the goods imported, the job is finished or job will go on somewhere or it's obsolete or whatever it is. So I feel uh, as, as in, a, in a crisis, nobody can say this is, the, this is the solution. You can't do that. There are certain times you have to tweak, you have to, but the path should be very clear to the, to the industrialists to the, 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 the people who are involved in develop the manufacturing, the path has to be clear. They are the best way, as the people said around this table, you have to consult them. You can't just take uh, decisions on your own. You have to consult the people who are really affected by this or really involved in this one. Then you can come out with a solution. Exactly. This is what everybody sees. Uh, uh, Mrs. Kasuri, you know, that per, how much ever we do all these policy decisions and all, it, it comes down to part of that, let's take at least a good 20 million people in this country. If they don't have anything to eat you know, when they go home, they think that the country is going down the drain. Now, this is what, what is being prompted, uh, you know, fueled through avenues like social media and all their interested parties who want to milk this situation, and they're doing this. Now, what, what I, I concur with what Mr. Rohan Fernando said with regard to, you know, massive gap in communicating and, and the policies are taken based on I don't know whom. Uh, what do you think? So I think, uh, so there is a crisis now because we don't have adequate reserves. Even it, it's not adequate reserves to pay certain bills, so that's uh, formed. I think they have adequate reserves in some way to pay for two months, but because of the controlling exchange, it's not being released. So you're having an artificial shortage in yeah, terms yeah, of uh, yeah. we can't procure, we can't manufacture. So that's one. Um, so if you let that go, what's the impact? Cost of living is going to go up. But that's a bullet we have to bite, right? That's one aspect. Second aspect is you can't, uh, con you, you can have a, n a negative list in the short term saying non-essentials do not import, which is true. We are consuming unwanted stuff and luxurious stuff. You can leave those. But essentials have to be there. It should be accessible. Remove those price controls like for milk, gas, for pharma, but keep it as non-profiteering. So you have reasonable, have a mechanism for that. You can't tell, I fix it at a rupee price and to whatever happens in the dollar, you, you continue and service. And, the, the, and what happens from the gray market, people need it. What did you see from during COVID and that uh, famous in injection when it was not available? You had it from price range of 200,000 to million. 1 million. So, one million, yeah. so you, yeah. you need to access. And people should understand. These are bullets and I think corporates and government together have to have a social obligation to solve that problem. But fundamentally, why did we come to this place? Because our exports are not enough. Mm. 
the basket hasn't changed. FDIs are not coming in. For FDIs, I think uh, the current BOI chairman is, is, uh, is advocating, but what would they look at when they come in? They have to see, um, they want an investment climate. They need to be able to put in money and take it out when they want to. You see the stock market last week, you found the institutional investors going out because they were afraid that they wouldn't be able to take the money out when they wanted to. So you should allow a free, they should feel comfortable investing here. You should have the freedom to, I think, the, the ease of doing business. Long term, we have to work on getting this economy going and growing that. Otherwise, you're not going to change the shift between import and export and our GDP growth. The, the, both won't, won't work. Uh, I want to talk about solutions because, you know, we, we always talk about problems, but, you know, what is the solution? Uh, and I'm sure that you, a lot of you all have solutions uh, in, in terms of that. Uh, <coughs> Dr. Kishu, uh, I want to get your take uh, before we go in for a break. Uh, you see, uh, let's take for an example, yes, there are dire conditions economically, we need to address them, that is right. But then on the other side, our top companies are having a, a good balance sheet for these six months, or you know, that's what it's stock market is, uh, you know, hitting hitting the mark all the time. Uh, not all the time, but you know, there were certain instances where it went really up. We don't understand this. Country is going, uh, you know, say everybody is saying, the central bank is saying, uh, you know, it's tough. But this is happening on this side. So, you know, the layman on numbers, okay, what's, what's going on? What's going on? Hmm. One <coughs> huge issue country has been grappling with is uh, state-owned enterprises that are making huge losses. That's an issue that we need to address. COID or no COID. That's something that's not a problem that came country recently. needed to address 20 years ago, two decades ago. Yeah. Successive governments having you know having good discussions with uh, the relevant stakeholders, decisions have been made at different points as well. But uh, no government had the the power, the backbone, uh, the, the the desire to really implement those because they had to face another election. You know, few years down the down, down the road, these state-owned enterprises together bust about 180 billion Sri Lankan rupees, right? Look at Sri Lankan Airlines, look at Ceylon Petroleum Corporation, uh, CEB, and, and list is, is very long. I mean, list has about 25 uh, SOEs you know, that are making losses. But in that, there are two media organizations as well. Uh, it's, it's, how do you explain this? Why do we have to maintain media organizations uh, at the expense of public money, at the expense of, say, uh, you know, investment and things like that, that would have a return on investment? So, I mean, I've been working with successive governments as much as, you know, these uh, you know, people have done. Every government recognized this as a key issue, wanted to address it, but uh, it has not happened so far. So I want this government to somehow, you know, tackle this issue, and uh, with that, the public expenditure will come down as well. The other thing is, of course, uh, developing local production, and uh, you know, banning or having uh, restrictions on uh, non-essentials, plastics. Yeah. I mean, if you look at you look at uh, uh, the the imports, five percent to six percent of that expenditure is for plastics, right? And which we can, you know, do without. And then there are so many other items as well. So how do we, you know, make those tough decisions and, and um, you know, implement those uh, decisions uh, for the next 10 years, right? It's not about, you know, implementing something by this government today and the next government coming in and then changing it. As Sumal said, you know, sometimes, Government uh, remains the same, but when a minister changes, <laughs> the policies policy change as well. All the time, right? right? <laughs> I mean, that is what we have seen in this country. We have spoken about it. We have debated about it. We have reached consensus that these, you know, have to be addressed. But have we actually done it? Right? That's where the solution lies. So, uh, on policy-wise, I think every government has shied away from this gem we are holding as SOEs to re for reforms, unlock that value. Also, I think Rohan did say that... Um, you called it a gem? 
as in it's an asset base <laughs> Ro- it's Roger. an asset base <laughs> so if you look at it from a liability perspective no i'm looking from an asset perspective if yeah, you pa- privatize all the including find the banks we've got the asset unlock a loan you yeah. could bring in so one one good example is lt lt what would actually if, if, you, if you take slt before this was private it was yeah uh, you know, the, the, the postal and telecommunication department so at that time they were you know divided at the center so slt became privatized postal department today postal department is running at a loss mm-hmm. now i can see postal department mm-hmm. becoming the next ups or aramix mm-hmm. because they have access to every address in sri lanka right. so why can't they do yeah. the delivery network. part of it you can deliver yeah. so many things packages food what even but they are still delivering yes primarily what? letters but oh, nobody right no, no, le- not even love letters now so all is <laughs> <laughs> so but we are still in the letter, letter stage so 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 the 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 so this transformation has to take place yeah. if you this is actually again, we have a lot of positives in this country yeah. I can, exactly you, exactly i mean i can tell you the positives the way i look at it you look at the interest rates today it has become single digit it's mm-hmm. below 9% yes. 6 to 7% yes. so that is the ideal time to invest in capital investment that is positive then when you take our gdp it's a, it's a nice uh, yeah. economy 88 billion we have potential to grow to 4 to to 8% the potential is there you take our poverty level poverty level the poverty level is considered as 5300 it's a very nominal amount i don't know how 5300 am just <laughs> calculated so so there are so many th- positive factor then the industry you take our marine industry fisheries industry we import jack mackerel from chile and call it a salmon tin and we eat salmon but actually jack mackerel but we have enough fish around us the, and they say uh, the fish in the indian ocean die of old age so we are not <laughs> harvesting sufficient fish for our needs and for exports so we have our three crop industry tea we have i have always professed that is to open to become a global tea hub in sri lanka but few people have been always blocking this one and we are stuck at 1.5 billion whereas the potential is to become a 5 billion industry uh, it controls uh, uh, similarly talk- rubber the rubber industry can grow to a next level and it's, it's happening the rri and rubber uh, i think uh, uh, there are private companies who are supplying solid tires and water with it then the coconut industry our ceylon coconut tree and coconut oil is a fed in most of the rural countries sure. and there's a demand which we can't meet so these are the areas where we can go into pharmaceutical industry so much of potential is there enough. so we can look at the positives rather I, than I, want, to, the I want to do that i i really want to do that uh, in the next segment yeah. uh, when we come uh, after a break where we want to talk about the fact you know what is the solution you know we we, we can't be focusing on the on the uh, on the question itself per se but we got to move on so yeah. move on means you know understanding what the problem is what what, what are we going to do a uh, certain action taken by the government in order to address those things are they working do we need to tweak uh, understanding uh, from this entire panel is uh, the fact that you know there is a lot of potential but but apparently the focus is somewhere else uh, so we we are pretty much you know forgetting the phase and looking at our pimple kind of scenario uh, let's take a short commercial break uh, you're watching this uh, special presentation of get to of the great for lankan reason we'll be right back want to uh, the special presentation of get real the great sri lankan reason we're talking about you know the issues that we have in this country and how uh, we can uh, reset our mindset and start looking at solutions and, and and actually doing them not just talking about them trying to do uh, them uh, my esteemed panel is uh, mrs kasturi uh, wilson from the group ceo of hemas holdings mr rohan fernando chairman of sri lanka telecom uh, dr kishu gomes the group managing director and ceo of dremron group of companies and also mr sumal pereira chairman of access group of companies uh, 
Uh, we've been talking about, I'll start off uh, with you, uh, Mr. Samal Pereira. Um, you know, what is the solution? Well, you know, there are we list out a lot of problems here, saying we have to do this, we have to do that. So how, how can we, like, I understand one of the suggestions you made earlier on is the political uh, mindset needs to get together and look about Sri Lanka and rather than their own political parties. Uh, is that it? We'll take little by little. One of the things I advocate for the last five years, I have not got anywhere, is to reduce the public sector. Because they say private sector is the engine of growth, and they take the private sector money and maintain the public sector, which is, in my opinion, it's a no-win situation. Yeah. You know, public sector can be kept at home even. If they come to work, it costs more. <laughs> You know, and public sector must be, now for example, even this government, as soon as they came, they took about 100,000 people. Yeah. You know? The graduates. Yeah. Graduates, you know? Pay 20,000. Huh? Mm. Mm. So those are political decisions, not the economic decisions. So as long as we have these political decisions made, we can't progress as a nation. If you want to be the most benevolent country, that's a different matter. But we that doesn't have add anything to our balance sheet. That's how we in the private sector think. Everything must add something to the balance sheet. You mean whatever you all bring from this end gets drained uh, for, for some other nonsense on the other end. So yeah. there is, I mean, what you're doing is not actually adding value to the nation, but it's just, you know, uh, playing somebody else's bills. Just to get votes. In my opinion, but but this government has gone uh, uh, in the opinion saying we have to strengthen the uh, the government sector, we have to uh, strengthen the public sector, and to ensure that you know they're taken care of. Uh, how if they if that's what they want to do, how can they do it right now uh, without uh, being a hindrance to the economy of the country or exactly. growth of the country? Yeah, that you have been them to the table and ask you. <laughs> but, uh, we can't answer because it is not possible. For example, public sector is a growing for the last 15, yeah. 20 years. Uh, and then all these pensions, all these strikes, you know, see the, they, they have made a huge uh, burden on the country. I'm not saying everybody, but they have to reform. Public sector reforms have to take place. I won't uh, mention the names on a sector I'm not involved. Mm -hmm. I'll talk of in the rice sector. I have no interest personally. You know, the two or three big rice millers, they have what, six staff. That is their husband, wife, son, accountant, six staff. Our paddy marketing board has about 300 staff. <laughs> Now, how can Paddy Marketing Board compete with the people who have six staff? There's a lot of waste. Waste. Let me add another they, number to that. Uh, when um, Ceylon Petroleum Corporation was, uh, you know, going through reforms, Indian Oil took over one third of uh, the the corporation, and at that point, this was in 2003-2004, when I was in the uh, energy industry. Indian oil had 125 employees for one third. Ceylon Petroleum Corporation had 7,000 plus for the two third. Well, now, so uh, in the Colombo port, now SCGT and CICT, they do a tremendous job. But the Sri Lanka Port Authority yet and the, some big social lobbies did not want uh, the West Terminal to be given, East Terminal East to be given. Yes, I mean, we, we saw that entire saga. Because of yeah. blunder. Because uh, blunder. Biggest blunder, as far exactly. As far as the is the biggest blunder. And I don't think East Terminal ever come up because these guys don't have money to put the East Terminal. <laughs> can, I, can, I, <laughs> can, can I ask uh, uh, from uh, Kasturi, uh, is the, the hope 
for this country. If it is, you know, changing all these kinds of mentality and trying to focus on a nation at large, what, 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 what do you think we need to do in terms of, you know, swiftly getting it on track and trying to get there? Because there is always a goal for this country. Everybody don't want, like, there were a time when we came to Colombo and we were ashamed because, you know, there was so much of dirt and this and that and Colombo was not a place where we would like to sell to the uh, rest of the world. But then it changed. That means we can do that. Okay, there is, there is no, uh, Nothing to say that we cannot. Uh, Paralympians going into Tokyo this time around winning a gold medal. Gold medal was not even in our mindset. Uh, it created a world a, record as well, not exactly just winning the gold. Exactly, a world record. That means that we can do this. What do you think uh, in terms of like we need, to, we need to change? I understand the mindset needs to change, but where else? I think the discipline, even if you say the basic thing on, on the country, uh, cleanliness. It's a simple, I think I had endless arguments when one point I was voting for somebody just simply because I said I felt safe and the country was clean. I said it's a basic sign of discipline. But um, look, for us to move first, I think that whole thing we are like in an ICU. So you need to be either get a moratorium on our debt or get some bilateral. Policy-wise, our country, our government is not inclined to go towards IMF because it comes with a huge amount of reforms. But eventually we might have to. But if not, we can at least postpone the next two, three years debt payment, which is about four million, four billion a year, right? To give us some ease. Um, SOE reforms, you, whether you like it or not, you bring government to the table and say, look, private sector, yes, they came with all sorts of tax benefits. You, we, we have to, we have to be able to give back into the coffers for a while for for the government to be liquid. But Private sector can't be the only ones. Government has to bite the bullet and say, let's be productive. You, either you go privatize it, or you take huge reforms which are mandated and, and, and should be taken through. You know, that's going to result in them being thrown out in the next election, and then so that this, this entire so, thing coming back. So they, everybody, like, like um, the port, when Sumar said it was one of our most, uh, it's, it's a, it was some of the unlocks which could have used, right? Somebody saw the foresight started on East Terminal. It was like held consecutive. The, the, it's like the bride was there waiting for the bridegroom to come. You could see the pier being constructed, and that was it. Cranes were ordered, cancelled, and it was sad for us to watch it to, because it was all political yeah. distrust. Everybody should individually, at, the, at this point, we have to put broad, bring the elephant in the room. Corruption should be stopped. We can't afford corruption anymore. From public procurement has to be revamped. Private sector we have. You, you, you have to have procurement to make sure it doesn't happen. You, you have to call that. Take it out, put country first. Take politics out. It's very tough. You have to do it. Take the reforms. Get the investment climates back in. Let the masses understand exactly what's going to happen. It means cost of living is going to go up. But it also means that you might still have jobs. We'll create more jobs. Uh, we talk about remittances coming in. And those are women and wives and kids yeah. there. It's not a dignified job. But they are keeping us alive here in terms of remittance, right? Mm, true. We need to create jobs to bring them back and give them a dignified life here. That same earning capacity at least. But for that, we need to be able to get the FDIs. We need the economy growing. You can't do that without public sector being reformed, without us being able to unlock and get exports to go, without controlling the exchange, without controlling the prices. It has to be free trade. At some time, <coughs> economics, you have to trust economics will play a game there. Dr. Kishu, um, yeah. you have been very much involved in the tourism sector, which is now wiped out. Uh, you know, it does not exist. A lot of boutique hotels down south, you know, all around the country, they don't know how to come back. Uh, what kind of solutions can we talk about to them? You know, are we, do we need to, you know, do they need to shut their boutique hotel and put a grocery in, in return? Is, is, is that the path we need to go? What do you think in terms right. of that? Tourism, as you know, is one of the biggest industries in the world and fastest growing. I mean, prior to COVID, that have been, you know, one of the fastest growing. 1.4 billion, you know, people traveling across the world, you know, with, uh, you know, huge economic value. As for Sri Lanka, best year was 2018, when we made uh, $4.3 billion. And uh, over uh, five years, uh, we had a plan to try and you know, take it up to seven to $8 billion. That's when the East attack took place. So with that, obviously, you know, we had to take a you know, kind of a you know, uh, backseat. 
but uh, still we managed to recover the industry up to 85 percent just in eight months and uh, we ended the year at uh, 3.9 but if you look at the potential I see a potential of 10 billion over the next uh, you know four to five years in the tourism industry in tourism industry alone beauty of uh, Sri Lanka being a small economy is that you know with couple of things you know being properly done and you can country. recover you can bounce back right so, I mean, people are waiting until all these yeah. travel restrictions are, yeah. you know, eased off to, to go everywhere, right? And, and I'm, I'm sure, I mean, if there are no travel restrictions, no COVID, the first thing we would do is, you know, take a flight and, and go somewhere and enjoy our life. So, I'm sure it's going to bounce back, uh, you know, faster than any one thing. So, in that, there'll be enormous amount of, you know, money available. And uh, we need to, you know, do uh, what it takes to try and be competitive in that industry today, not once, you know, COVID is dealt with. So we have opened the country, but not opened the country, you know. Sadly, that's the situation we are in. And so far for the year, up to uh, August, we've had uh, just 25,000 tourists, you know, arriving uh, in the country. And in uh, 2020, uh, we had a revenue of only 600 and say 80 million uh, US dollars. Uh, so that is with three normal months uh, mm -hmm. in the, in the at, at the beginning of the uh, you know uh, January February March. So potential is is tremendous, and uh, because tourism is is suffering, uh, you know, about two million people uh, are, are suffering as as well. So they need to be supported, and only way they can be supported with opening up uh, the the tourism industry, and uh, so basically managing the health uh, crisis to you know and the money that you're is not there. suggesting to give a hand out to them. You are suggesting uh, create the environment so that they can bounce back. If we had money. Giving something would have been, you know, good, but do we have the capacity as a, as a country, yeah. as the government, to be able to do that? So, in the absence of that, what do we do? We just, you know, take all, you know, hard decisions, bold decisions, very aggressive decisions, and create that environment within which tourism, you know, can uh, prosper. I mean, leave politics aside. I mean, this is. There has to be a country, people you know, need to live for somebody to be able to do politics. So at this moment of time, I think it's paramount that you know, all parties come together and decide on a set of you know, strategies for the country. Everyone buying into it and making it the plan for the country. We've been talking about it you know, over the past uh, one hour or so. Uh, where with the uh, change of government, the policies will not uh, change. Because to, to encourage FDIs, that is a must, and that's where we're being, you know, uh, failing as, as, as a country. So, common set of uh, strategies, consistent policies, and, uh, you know, where we think that uh, the countries can, you know, look at Sri Lanka or relook at Sri Lanka as a good investment destination, and with that, I'm sure we'll be able to recover. Mr. Rohan, uh, what do you think? Uh, you know, uh, what are the key things we got to change right yeah, now see, in order to. You see, uh, we have to find employment for people. Right now, fortunately, our unemployment rate is 5.6 percent. Those are the latest thing. But unfortunately, most of the people who are employed are not properly employable. They are in the public sector. They are not doing anything. So I think we have to get the right people for employment. Now, the technology, tech industry, there's a lot of potential. Mm. So tech industry can take a substantial amount of people into at high salaries now at SLT we have developed we are developing five technical institutions where we have we are upgrading them to uh, train technically savvy people the school leavers some of our people so some of our staff uh, we have at SLT alone we have seven thousand six thousand people six to seven thousand people some of them can be placed outside Sri Lanka on secondment. So these are some of the avenues we have. We have already uh, spoken to a lot of agencies. Even we are discussing with US. US is coming in a big way to help us. Actually, what people don't know is behind the scene, US want to invest in Sri Lanka. There are discussions going on. They are giving us assistance. Some of the new developments we are working with US, which I can't reveal for obvious <laughs> reasons at the <laughs> stock exchange. <laughs> right. yeah. But there are a lot of things are happening. But unfortunately, the good things that are happening are also not conveyed. In fairness to the president, I have spoken to him, and there are a lot of ideas. The digital path, 
that can reduce the number of people. Sumal was talking about the public sector. Absolute mm -hmm. truth. We have to reduce the public sector, the, the burden on the economy and on the country. For uh, every 12 people, we have a public servant. Mm -hmm. For every 12 people, we have, we have a public servant. So do we need that? These must be the highest yes. public in the world. service in yeah. the whole world. <laughs> right. So this we is a problem. We, ha we have to. We have to. We have to change. And having said, uh, talking about SLT, not only SLT, there are quite a lot of uh, government SOEs. Now they are turning into profit, but very few people know. So what I feel, the government should take these as models yeah. to mm. convert the other SOEs also into to turn okay. the bin, and then not become a burden. To the to the to the tax money. Once you do that, you find efficiency will come, accountability and responsibility will be embedded. The most, uh, the unfortunately, a lot of political decisions are overpowering uh, the appointment and uh, political stooges come and take over. I'm not a political person. I must ensure <laughs> I'm not in a Vietma Gau anybody. I'm from the <laughs> private sector. And nothing to do with politics. But I feel there's a lot of potential for Sri Lanka. The tourism sector, I think, as Kishu says, some of these hotels can move on to health, health tourism. A yeah, lot true, of people will come during yeah. the winter. We have the, quite a lot of good uh, summer weather. We'll move in for, for recuperating. So there's a lot of potential in every aspect that we need to look at. So we can stay and complain, yes. become the doomsdayers, the prophets of doom, all these things. But if some of us do the right thing, look at positively, and then get other people to follow that trend, I think this country can come out of the problem. Mr. Sumar, uh, uh, very I quickly. To speak on one matter which I missed out. The debt problem is not a bilateral debt problem. Our debt problem is our sovereign debt. Yeah. Now, sovereign debt base is based on rating agencies. They are yeah. what they think. So they are guided by IMF. If that's why we have to go to IMF, not for money. We need the IMF serial. Yeah. You understand? Then we have to pay our sovereign debt. There is no, we can't uh, restructure sovereign debt because those are owned by yeah. the, the people at large and then that is the end. That means we are bankrupt. So that sovereign debt we can pay. Bilateral debts we can restructure. Yeah. But th that is not a big component. Component, you know. So True. Uh, uh, Mrs. Uh, Kasturi, uh, Wilson, uh, finally, uh, what do you think, uh, you know, very quickly, uh, running out of time, uh, just so to get your time. Uh, well, I, I think, look, like Kishu started saying, we are a resilient country. We are resilient. But we can't be like ostriches putting our head down and saying <laughs> we are going to do the same thing and expect a different result. It's not going to happen. Uh, and this time, everybody from private sector to the government have to be more mindful about the masses, the people out of the 22 million people. It's our obligation to work, to do the right thing by the country because look, we need hope for them. They are next generation. Yeah, yeah. We can't destroy this country. You can do a few right decisions today to actually change the trajectory and like Sumal said those are signals for IMF even to come in and say that you have the willpower to change somebody to come in because you need some relief for the next one year um, you you can't control and restrict and have policies and expect the problem to go away it won't happen so from from our side you could do you, you saw companies are doing decently well but it can't last it can't last if you don't die, it's going to burst at some point. So I would say let's all buckle up and take the tough decisions. It's not going to be palatable, it's going to be tough road. But look, we've been resilient. We've gone through the war at, yeah, at yeah, the worst yeah. time and we've come out of it. And today, did we, did we think we'll be think, talking like this or we would have had the last few years? So you can do it, but it's a mindset and it's a will mm -hmm. to do the right thing versus the nice thing. Dr. Kishu uh, Gomez, I'll give you the last word. What do you think? Well, it's, 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 you need to start with setting the right expectations. Right? Don't expect you know miracles. It's not possible. Uh, the the way forward is you know extremely hard. 
and in that don't expect others to provide solutions to you. You got to find solutions yourself. Be it an individual or an organization, find a way. I mean, we are, we are paid for that. You know, we are there for that. Uh, it's not uh, a, a problem that he created by the government. It's not a problem that he created by the previous government. It's a problem that has been, you know, looming over a period of time, which has become the, uh, the, the problem that we see today, uh, and we need to deal with it, right? So that attitude change is extremely important, and until and unless we, we change our attitude, uh, we will continue to you know complain and do uh, nothing about uh, sure. get, getting engaged in the recovery process. Dr. Kishore Gomez, the Group Managing Director and CEO of Dremeron uh, Group of Companies. Uh, Mrs. Kasturi Wilson, uh, the Group CEO of Hamas Holdings. Mrs. Suma Pereira, Chairman of Access Group of Companies. And also Mr. Rohan Fernando, Chairman of Sri Lanka Telecom. Uh, lady and gentlemen, thank you very much uh, for taking the time and uh, sharing your ideas. What, what I, I, I understood in the end. We got to reset our minds in order to do this, and and, and that's what uh, we as Sri Lankans, as a nation, needs to think. Um, you know, we ain't a nation of beggars. We are a nation of doers, and this is doable. And, and this is what everybody is saying. We can get out of this, and we can actually come out. Um, we'll be injured a little bit, but still, we will come out alive. Uh, all of us has to get uh, gear ourselves to that time instead of waiting till someone comes and find a solution whatever, like, just like what Dr. Kishubuma said. Thank you very much uh, uh, for coming and accepting our invitation. I hope to continue this discussion. Uh, you know, uh, one and a half hours is not enough to talk about Sri Lanka's problems. That's something that I've always <laughs> understood. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, always remember to stay positive, test negative and get yourself vaccinated. Good night.